Honorable Speaker, the Chairperson of the NCOP, the officials of the government in waiting, the EFF, my President, Mr. President, Kumu President, Vashango Lothe, La Africa Chipembe, Nda. We thank the judiciary, we thank the South African media, we thank the NGOs and all opposition parties and the people of South Africa for defeating the monster that was created by the ruling party. We say the unity displayed during difficult times we have gone through in the past nine years once more demonstrated that when people are united, not even the powerful can defeat them. We once more say to the people of South Africa, you must continue to be vigilant because the ANC is still in power. Anything is possible. We say to the people of Zimbabwe, the people, the Tsangarai family, the friends, and his colleagues in the MDC, please receive our revolutionary condolences. We may not have agreed with the politics of Morgan Tsangarai, but we fully admit that indeed he won the elections and the regime did not allow him to become the leader of the people of Zimbabwe. We want to say to Morgan Tsangarai that will never happen in South Africa. He will not allow nonsensical things like those that happened to you in Zimbabwe to happen. We say to the people of South Africa, we must learn from the mistakes of Zimbabwe and in honor of Morgan Tsangarai, not allow those who are in power to want to stay in power even when the will of the people indicate otherwise. President, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you because when they elected you in this illegitimate parliament, I was not here. But the majority of this parliament have agreed that they must proceed business as usual. I want to state very clear on behalf of the EFF that we are willing to give you a chance as a president of the Republic of South Africa, as head of state and government. We only give you a chance because you have not been personally found guilty of being a constitutional delinquent. Because we do not entertain delinquents. We deal with delinquents decisively, like we did before. It is very easy for a country to degenerate if you allow individuals to become constitutional delinquents. President, we want to say to you that you are not a king. You are a leader of the people. And therefore, you must never expect a treatment of a king. You must be a leader. You must welcome those who criticize you and always defend the right of those who disagree with you to disagree with you. You must not abuse your power because you think you are powerful like that. Comrade President, we listened to you uh, when you were speaking because it was the right thing to do. We give you a chance to explain your plans. But the reality is that, President, you are not having any plan. That's why you came here and told us of job summits, because you are still going to look for plans out of the job summits. That's why you came here and told us about the issues of social sector summits, because there's no plan. You came here and told us about investment conference, because there's no plan. You told us about youth summit, because you have got no clear plan on how you are going to resolve a thorny issue of youth unemployment. President, you have no plan in dealing with collection of tax because SARS has collapsed. That's why you have called for the commission of inquiry into tax affairs. President, we are saying to you, you are doing all of this because you know that you will be a president for 12 months. You are effectively saying to South Africa, there is nothing I can do in the next 12 months because I will be looking for plans from commissions. 
and after 12 months I will be gone because indeed you will be gone after 12 months <laughs> President you mentioned expropriation of land without compensation and we all agreed we actually that was the highest applaud you got I had the leader of the opposition saying something else before I come to you I want to warn him the leader of the opposition that your stay in the metros is going to depend on your attitude on the expropriation of land without compensation and I want to warn you about that because that's a fundamental issue which is going to make us fight with you because anyone opposed to expropriation of land without compensation is the enemy of our people and such a person will be dealt with Mr. President, the expropriation of land without compensation mentioned by you did not capture the headlines because they know you are bluffing. They know you are not serious about it. Anybody who is worried about investment in South Africa would have been worried when you mentioned the expropriation of land without compensation. But you told them, I am just passing time. Don't worry, I'm silencing my opponents in the ANC. This cannot be an issue to bluff about this cannot be an issue to pass time with it's an emotive issue and you only mention it if you mean it it's not a matter that you can go around joking about it there are no conditions attached to expropriation of land without compensation because when they took our land they never attached any condition they just killed our people i don't understand mr president why would you have faith Mutambi as a minister and not have Tokodi Diza as a minister? What justification is that? Any normal person in power makes faith Mutambi a minister and leave out a person like Tokodi Diza. You removed the ESCOM people because of allegations. You didn't waste time. You waste time to remove your own colleagues here. The reason why you jumped that line of saying you are going to arrest people is because when you spoke about corruption and arresting corrupt people, we kept on saying ace. And you wanted to save ace's face by jumping that line. Why? Because you are continuing to protect your own. Don't protect those who are implicated in corruption. All of them who are going to be frequenting state capture inquiry, they must be released so that they can have time to prepare for state capture inquiry. Thank you very much. The Honorable Butelezi. Speaker. Yes, Honorable, uh, Honorable Chief Speaker. Group may, of the IFP. Yeah, may I crave your indulgence? I was working on the time uh, that Honorable Malema would take, and he only took nine of his 14 minutes. Honorable Butelez is on the way. Yes, I, I recognize that. Thanks. Honorable Speaker, Your Excellency, our President, Honorable Ministers and Honorable Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members, I apologize, Madam Speaker. Dr. Josie says that I was captivated. Maybe I was, you know, when his leader was speaking. This morning, I wish to add my voice to the many who congratulate our new President on taking office, believing that our nation has moved into a new era in which may begin to heal the serious wounds inflicted over the past eight years. The President has indeed given us hope for change 
and renewal, he has spelled out exactly what he's going to do 